Hello everyone, I am Dr. Neeraj and today I am going to discuss you about phylogenetic tree. So without any delay, let's start the video. So first of all, we should know that uh, what is a phylogenetic tree. So phylogenetic tree, it is a diagrammatic representation of the evolutionary relationship among the living organism means by making this tree, you just show that how the species, they are evolutionarily related with themselves. So by this tree, you can search for the common ancestor of different species and you can also search for the evolutionary history of the different species. So this phylogenetic tree, it generally, it may also called as the tree of life or dendrogram. Now the terminology of this phylogenetic tree means what are the terms or how you draw the phylogenetic tree. So in the phylogenetic tree, like this is the example of phylogenetic tree. So in this, these straight lines, these are called as branches of the tree. So these are the branches of tree where these branches, they meet like here at the base. It is known as the root. This root, it represents the common ancestor of the, all the species. Means you can get the information about the ancestor of all the species by this root where these main branches join. And where these present day branches they join that is known as the node and this node it gives the information about the ancestor of present day species means this root give the information about the common ancestor of all the species while this node it give the information about the ancestor of the present day species and these a b c d e these represent the taxa and these taxa they represent the present day species means the species which are present today. So by this you can understand the phylogenetic tree means what are the branches, the role of root and node and the terminal species that is present day species which are called as taxa. Now the types of phylogenetic tree. So the phylogenetic tree may be rooted tree or unrooted tree. The rooted tree means which have a root from which you can get the information about the ancestral and unrooted which do not have any root. This rooted and unrooted trees, these may further divide into bifurcating tree and multifurcating tree. So let's discuss these trees. Like first is the rooted tree. So this tree, it has a common root which gives us the information about the ancestor. Like here, this root, it shows the information about the ancestor of all these four species that is A, B, C, D. So by the rooted tree, you get the information about the common ancestor of all the species. While unrooted tree, it do not give the information about the common ancestor. Means it do not have the root like here you can see the species are A, B, C, D, but there is no root in the tree. So you cannot go or you cannot find the common ancestor of all these species. So this unrooted tree, it only gives the information about the present day species, but it do not give any information about the common ancestor. So as I told, these trees, they may either be bifurcating or multifurcating. So bifurcating is that phylogenetic tree, which has two descendants arise from the interior node. Means when from this node point, two species or two descendants arise, so that is known as the bifurcating tree as you can see clearly in this diagram. Here from the node, the two descendants are arising. So this is the example of bifurcating phylogenetic tree. In case of multifurcating phylogenetic tree, so there will be more than two or many or multiple descendants arises from the interior node like here in the example of multifurcating tree, you can clearly see that from the node point there are more than two descendants are arising because if only two species or descendants arise from the node that is called as the bifurcating but when more than two species or descendants arise from that tree that node point that is known as the multifurcating phylogenetic tree both rooted and rooting can be either bifurcating tree or multifurcating tree now what is the importance of this phylogenetic tree or what are the applications of the phylogenetic tree. So by the phylogenetic tree, you can study the evolutionary histories of different species. Means as you know, 
you can get the information about the common ancestor of present day species you can also get the information about the evolutionary path of these species like a particular species has been evolved from what kind of species so you can get the evolutionary histories of the species the next use is that you can also get that how the species were spread geographically means you can get the geographically positions or geographical habitats of the different species you can also detect the geographical habitats of the different species means how the different species were spread geographically so you can get the information from this phylogenetic tree the next by using this phylogenetic tree or by making or by analyzing the phylogenetic tree you may search for the new species means how the new species can be evolved you can get idea that how new species can be evolved by just analyzing the phylogenetic trees and you can also identify the most recent common ancestor as you can see the phylogenetic tree so you can clearly see the common ancestors of the various present day species and you can also trace the different microbes back to their evolutionary history means if you find microbes so you can simply create the phylogenetic tree of that microbe and by studying the phylogenetic tree you can deduct or you can trace the evolutionary history of that particular microbe so this is also one of the importance of phylogenetic tree so that was all about the phylogenetic tree the types of phylogenetic tree that rooted and unrooted tree and the importance of phylogenetic tree so that's all for today guys see you in the next video thank you very much